Hello, welcome back to my channel. So, The Conjuring franchise has become one of the most popular and successful horror movie franchises to this day. Whether you like them or not is up to you. Whether you think they're good or not is also up to you. To me, they're definitely hit and miss, but I will always have a special place in my heart for The Conjuring because it's the movie that first got me into horror. The first Conjuring movie came out when I was 12 years old, and at that point, I was too scared to really watch horror movies aside from like paranormal activity. In fact, I was scared of just the Conjuring trailer. I remember like closing my eyes when it came on TV, like during commercial breaks, and I would just sit there with my eyes closed until it was done. But then I watched it and yeah, I got spooked at times. Obviously it's a horror movie, but it was something that I could sit through and tolerate and actually really enjoy. And it opened me up into watching more horror movies and thrillers. And I loved The Conjuring so much that I in turn also loved Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are the paranormal investigators that the franchise is centered around. And I went for years and years, eight to be exact, since I just found this out, uh, I went for years loving the Warrens and thinking that they were just so cool and I admired them. I, at one point in high school, thought of like studying or taking demonology classes. Um, but recently I found out that the on-screen Warrens are actually really glamorized and an unrealistic version of the real life Warrens, apparently, uh, who had some secrets that they made sure were not a part of the Conjuring movies. And finding this information ruined my fucking day. So basically I'm here to ruin yours. Okay, my goal in this video isn't to like ruin your day, but I do think it's important to share this information for the people like me who didn't know it and are currently idolizing these people who might not actually be that great. So trigger warning before we get into it, uh, we're going to be talking about physical and mental abuse, as well as inappropriate relations with minors. If any of that makes you uncomfortable, feel free to click away. But yeah, without further ado, this is the real story of the real Ed and Lorraine Warren. Lorraine Warren, whose maiden name is Moran, Morin? I think it's Moran, was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut on January 31st, 1927, and she passed away April 19th of 2019 at the age of 92. Lorraine was a trans medium, the meaning of which is kind of like in the name. Basically, the medium enters a trance or an altered state of consciousness to do work in the spirit world by having the spirits in this world use the medium's body and mind to create an action or message. That's why in the movies, I think it's the second Conjuring where they're like teasing about the Amityville house at the beginning Lorraine is like posing as the guy that killed the people I don't know I don't personally I'm not a skeptic by the way but I I don't believe that Amity was a real case sorry that's another that's another thing for a different day Lorraine began to experience these abilities that came with her mediumship as a really young child but she didn't really think anything of it like she didn't think it was abnormal because she just kind of assumed that everyone else could do the same thing but one day when she was at school at 12 years old, she recalls planting a sapling, like a tree sapling with her class because it was Arbor Day. And she claims that once the sapling was in the ground, she could see it in its fully grown form as a fully grown tree. And this nun at her school was like, uh, what are you doing? Do you see the future? And Lorraine was like, I don't know, I guess. And that's kind of when she figured out that she had abilities that others didn't have. Now, Ed was born on September 7th, 1926, also in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and he passed away August 23rd of 2006 at the age of 79. Ed actually grew up in a haunted house, which is what kind of led him into being a paranormal investigator. Ed claims that when he was five years old, he saw his first apparition in his house. It was actually the deceased landlady of the house that had passed away a year ago and he claims that after that first experience is when he started to have dreams where dead relatives would visit him one of which is who told him that in his future he would quote help many priests but never become a priest himself which grew to be true. Ed worked as an usher at a movie theater in Connecticut as a teenager, which is how he met Lorraine in 1944 because the theater he worked at coincidentally happened to be the one that Lorraine and her mom would frequently go to. So Ed and Lorraine began dating soon after meeting and then soon after they began dating, Ed went to go serve in World War II when he went to enlist in the Navy at just 17 years old. He was only in the Navy for about four months though when the ship he was on sank and he was sent home for 30 days on survivor's leave and during that month he was home 
film is when he proposed to Lorraine and they ended up getting married before he returned to war. Now when they got married they were kind of like thinking of their future and how they were going to financially support themselves and their future children and they had actually planned on making a living through selling art. They both had some artistic ability and Ed actually went to Perry Art School after he retired from the Navy. And this is weirdly enough what led them into working in the world of the paranormal is that they wanted to paint and sell haunted houses. Well, not sell haunted houses, they wanted to sell the paintings. <laughs> they wanted to sell paintings of haunted houses that they painted. They would scan newspapers for articles and information about haunted houses and they would go to them and they would sketch out the house and then they would go like knock on the door of the house and be like, hey, here's the sketch. We will give it to you if you tell us what's going on in your house. And then once they hear the story, if they were like interested enough in it, they would end up doing a full painting of the house and sell that painting. And investigate the house. I don't know how I forgot to say that. Uh, yeah, they investigated it too obviously. And they actually like traveled around the country doing this for five years. Honestly, I'm not sure what the reason for doing that was. I assume it's because of Ed and his interest in the paranormal and his experiences as a child because at that point Lorraine was actually a skeptic and was more nervous about going to these houses because she thought that the inhabitants of the houses were suffering from overactive imaginations. Um, but over time as they went to more and more of these houses and she saw more similarities in places where it's like they couldn't have planned it, you know, is when she started to become a believer. So after doing this for a few years, they decided to create the New England Society for Psychic Research in 1952, which is still up and running and is actually the oldest running paranormal research organization in the United States. Ed and Lorraine formed the society to help them document their cases and paranormal research. And at the same time, they like created the society. They also created their occult museum, which was a part of their Connecticut home where they kept the pieces from the cases you guys should already know this is where Annabelle is and all that. Eventually they did more well-known cases such as Amityville, Annabelle, and of course The Conjuring. I won't be going into all those because I think it's safe to assume those have been talked about at least a little bit. So yeah, that is the brief history of Ed and Lorraine Warren. As quoted by the New England Society of Psychic Research's website, quote, Ed Warren was a demonologist, Lorraine Warren was a transmedium. They were not occultists, they were not strange. If you had the privilege of speaking to them, they would seem like normal folks with regular jobs, end quote. But now let's talk about what the two of them apparently tried to hide as they grew in popularity, something that would contradict the sentiment of them being normal folks. I will say here, for my legal safety, all of this is alleged. I cannot prove that this is true, nor am I trying to. I am just retelling what the alleged victim has claimed. So let's talk about Judith Penny. In 2014, a woman named Judith Penny claimed that for 40 years, she had a sexual relationship with Ed Warren that started when he was in his mid thirties and she was 15 years old. I will be putting my sources in the description. Um, note that all of the sources, or at least most of them, are from 2017. Uh, that's kind of when these became public. However, Judith made the legal declaration of these claims in 2014. So don't don't get it confused. <laughs> Judith and Ed met in the early 1960s. She was attending a high school in Connecticut that Ed was working for at that point as a bus driver since this is before they started to see financial success in the paranormal world since at that point they weren't charging anything for like their home visits and stuff. So in 1963, Ed moved Judith into he and Lorraine's home where she became his girlfriend, if you could even call it that. And yeah, apparently she lived there for four decades. The relationship between Ed and Judith was sexual from the start, and Judith even claims that Ed on several occasions told her that she was the love of his life. Yet in public, he and Lorraine would claim that she was either a niece or a poor girl that they were just so nice enough to help out. Yeah. Lorraine was in on it. She knew about the relationship between Ed and Judith, and not only did she know of its sexual relations, but in May of 1978, when Judith became pregnant with Ed's child, Lorraine tried to persuade Judith into getting an abortion because it would be bad publicity for the blossoming career of Ed and Lorraine. Allegedly, Lorraine even tried to get Judith to tell people that someone broke into her apartment and raped her just so that they wouldn't question who the father was and Judith did end up getting this abortion that Ed and Lorraine drove her to, picked her up, dropped her off at home, and went to a lecture. And a crazy thing about this whole thing is that it wasn't even like a huge secret that Judith was living with the Warrens. 
Like, like the, the claims about the relationship and other things I will talk about, those are alleged, but I think it's fact that she lived with him. The daughter has said this, and neighbors knew about it even back then. Which is crazy because it's not at all mentioned in any of the movies multiple of which have scenes in the Warren home. But yeah, right when Judith moved into the home in 1963, somebody called the police because they were like, hey, why are you moving this random 15-year-old girl into your house? So the police were called, but Ed wasn't the one that was arrested. Judith was. She spent a night in prison with police trying to get her to confess to the relationship between her and Ed, but obviously she didn't cooperate because she was a scared 15-year-old girl. But since she didn't cooperate with the police, she was ordered to go to a delinquent youth office for the next month, which Ed would take her to after picking her up from school. Other claims from Judith are that Ed was physically abusive to Lorraine and would sometimes even hit her so hard that she would become unconscious. And another claim is that Ed was a little bit fraudulent in the paranormal investigations and had asked Judith to assist him with creating some hoaxes. Obviously that last claim isn't as severe as the others, it's just what was in the reports. So yeah, obviously that's bad, and to add on top of that, apparently Warner Brothers knew of these claims and just kind of ignored it and continued to portray Ed and Lorraine as this super loving couple that totally didn't have a teenage girl living in their house as Ed's secret girlfriend. And also it's even reported that in the contract between the Warner Bros and the Warrens, say that five times fast, it's explicitly stated that, quote, the films couldn't show the Warrens engaging in crimes, including sex with minors, child pornography, prostitution, or sexual assault, and that neither the husband nor wife could be depicted as participating in an extramarial sexual relationship, end quote. Which is a weird thing to have in your contract, just like out of nowhere, you know? Like, I get it, obviously you don't want to be portrayed as a sex criminal, but like, Neither does anyone else, and I don't think a lot of people ask for that if that's not even related to, like, the subject material. Now, Ed passed away before these allegations were made public, and even though Lorraine is no longer with us, when she was alive, her attorney said that the Warren family has no knowledge of the alleged conduct. But what I find interesting about that is that it doesn't explicitly deny that Judith ever lived with them, and even more interesting is that the Warren's daughter, Judy, claimed that Judith did live with them. However, she claims that Judith moved in when she was 18. I don't want to sway people's opinions one way or another, but I personally find it contradictory that Judith apparently had to report to a delinquent youth office for not telling the police about her and Ed's relationship if she was an adult, right? That doesn't really make sense, but that's just me. But yeah, uh, that's essentially the end of the allegations. Nothing ever really came of them. Obviously, it wasn't shown in the movies, which I... It makes sense that they're not. Hollywood is nasty. They're going to cover things up, and it's, you know, bad. Um, and the Warrens are passed away. So at this point, I don't even think there's anything to do about it. I just do think that it's important to share, you know, in case you were like me, who just thought that the Warrens were like, really cool. And that's not to say that they're not. Again, this is alleged. Please don't sue me. <laughs> but also, believe victims, you know. Yeah, um, that's essentially the end of this video. I know it's a bit of a bummer. I don't really have, like, a planned out moral of the story. This is just kind of a bit of, like, me sharing information I found with you guys. I guess if we wanted a moral of the story, it would be the same one I have in most of my videos, which is that Unless you speak to someone personally, you don't know the type of person they are, whether it's a musician or a YouTuber, or in this case, paranormal investigators. Uh, you don't know what skeletons they have in their closet. So it's unfortunate. I will simply pretend that Ed and Lorraine Warren are actually fictional characters and Vera Farminga and Patrick Wilson are the only Ed and Lorraine that have ever existed ever. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, um, or, di or didn't. I don't know, I hope you were informed. I hope this was interesting. I don't, I don't particularly wanna say that you enjoyed it. Um, Y'all get what I'm saying. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like the video. If you like the video, comment on the video. If you like the video, subscribe to the video maker, and I will see you maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, goodbye.